Hey there, I'm John Morris here. I'm the lead instructor for the Wishlist Member Certified Developers Program and the CEO here at JohnMorrisOnline.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about CSS floats. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about them in general and using them in your code because uh, I know you, know you may or may not be completely familiar with all the ins and outs of floats. So I think it's important to have that base understanding and then of course we're also going to talk about how you use them in conjunction with responsive design so from a conceptual perspective uh, the thing to understand about floats is floats are uh, essentially where they're going to allow you to switch from when you see your responsive site switch from a side to side view uh, to, when the, to when the screen gets smaller you switch to more of a top to bottom view okay so uh, that's uh, essentially what we're going to be doing uh, in this particular tutorial or, or, or lesson. All right, so here you can see I've created a page. I've kind of labeled uh, what we've got going on here, and we're going to talk about um, just how these floats work first. All right, so let's go over here to the code. I want to take a look at the HTML. So I have my body tag, and inside my body tag, I have a parent div with the class of red. Um, this class, uh, this red class basically just gives it a red background. We'll look at the CSS here in a minute. All right, and then I have uh, my span. I have four span uh, divs, and I'm adding basically some, some modifier classes to them. Now, these are regular classes, but they're really used more as modifiers. So um, I have the FL, which uh, represents float left, FR, which le represents float right, and then I have this clear fix. Uh, style and I have a few others that I'll show you here in a second all right so the way this should work is I should have a div with a red background behind all of uh, as my parent element four spans uh, the first one floated left the first one floated right uh, the third one floated left with a clear both applied and the fourth one floated right with a clear both applied uh, and so that should give me what we have here although um, you'll notice there's no red background I'll talk about that here in a minute but um, uh, this should give me what we have here so we have a float left and a float right without any sort of clear added to this so these two elements because if we look at the um, span that we've created we've created a width of 50 percent we've done our box sizing and so we have two 50 percent elem uh, width elements with a float left and a float right, so they should float right alongside each other. So a lot of times when you're creating your designs, this is uh, the kind of thing you'll do. Um, maybe not uh, in a big div like this, but, uh, well, let's just go ahead and head on over and I'll show you an example. So I'm just gonna head on over to um, johnmorrisonline.com real quick and show you an example of, of how you might do this. So these particular boxes right here are an example where you have kind of a three across scenario like this. This is something that you do pretty often in, um, in, in design. Even down here we have, um, you know, we have a, f uh, uh, an element that is, uh, I would say roughly 60, 70% width. And this one's over here is 30% width. Um, and so this is going to be floated left and this is floated right uh, alongside of it so that they show up next to each other. So even that's an example of this kind of side by side view. Eventually, though, uh, with responsive design, you're going to want to put those into a top to bottom view like this. And so that's what we're doing here, is putting them in a top to bottom view. All right. So, again, that kind of thing is uh, pretty common in design and that's what we're doing here. Down here what uh, essentially I'm showing you is I have float left applied to this element and I have float right applied to this element but you'll notice they're not floating alongside each other and that's not because they're too wide they're still both the same width as the two on top but it's because I've applied the clear both um, or the uh, clear both to both of these so uh, they're actually getting cleared so that they uh, don't float alongside one another. So here's our CSS here. Here's our float left. You can see it's just a float left, float right, clear both. Um, and then we'll get into these other two here in a second. 
Okay, so again, looking in the HTML, these don't have the uh, clear fix applied, so they're floating alongside each other. These do, and that's why they're not. So what I want you to understand is that um, the float uh, property in CSS and the clear property, in a way, are kind of sister properties. So if you want elements to float alongside of each other, then you use float. If you want to cause them to not float alongside one another, um, you oftentimes use clear. Um, now I'm gonna tell you about a way I like to do it. It's a little bit different, but I want you to know what, what common kind of practices are. So a lot of times you use these two in conjunction. So in your regular display, for your wider screens, you'll use a float left to float elements alongside one each one another. And then when you get down to a certain screen size, you'll actually change that. You'll actually use clear to clear those elements uh, so they don't float alongside one another and you get that top to bottom view that you're looking for. All right, so um, that's, that's kind of the technique and the ins and outs of floats. Now the one thing I wanted to, to cover with this is, um, you notice we had a, uh, our div, our parent div here with a class of red. And we set the background to red here, okay? And you'll notice when we go to our, to look at that, we don't have a red background. The reason that is is because of uh, what's called the collapse. And essentially what happens is when you have a parent div, like our, our div with the class of red is, and all of the uh, elements inside of it are floated, then it's going to collapse itself. Now, there's a lot of reasons why that do that, and it seem, may seem to you like it shouldn't do that, but when you start getting into layering divs on one, top of one another and wanting to you know, maybe move uh, different elements on top of one another, then it actually becomes really handy, the, the collapse. So, um, it, it's just something to be aware of that it's there and that if you don't want that collapse to happen then you have to do a couple uh, you have to apply some sort of fix to make it not happen so our fix um, is this overflow flick overflow fix and so basically we apply an overflow hidden uh, in this class to an element and that uh, is one way of fixing it so if we come in here and we add the overflow fix class here and we come back here, refresh this, uh, you'll notice that now we get our red background. All right, now that's one way of doing it. Um, there are s several different methods that you can use. Um, I, I typically use the overflow fix uh, for everything that I do. There may be certain cases where that won't work for you. Um, one thing I do wanna do is point you to uh, a really great article on CSS tricks. So it's CSS tricks, css-tricks.com and then it's all about floats uh, up here in the URL and um, you'll notice that one of the things this is a really great article if you just want to read more about floats um, but one one thing they talk about here is that collapse that I'm talking about and you can see that it has a number of different methods for um, clearing floats this the overflow method is the one I just showed you uh, you've probably seen something like this where you have an empty div that has clear both applied to it uh, at the and it happens you know after all of the floated divs this basically causes the parent div to have to uh, adjust for this div and, and then you you get it where it doesn't collapse uh, here's a little more advanced method maybe with um, you know using some of the pseudo selectors um, so you can kind of look through this a little bit and decide which one you want to do. Like I said, I pretty much use the overflow fix most of the time. Uh, works for the stuff that I do. So um, so that's, that's a little bit uh, about that. Now, obviously the big question here is, you know, how does this come into play when it comes into responsive web design? Well, one thing that you're going to do a lot is, again, you're going to be accounting for... Uh, you're going to be creating these kind of side-by-side -side, uh, orientations that then switch to this top-to-bottom uh, orientation. Okay, that's one of the the main things that you do when it comes to responsive web design. So the way that you do that is when you have uh, a span like this, and you've here we've applied 
uh, different classes for float left and float right, but you could just be as easily be doing this. Um, and it's the, it's the same idea. Uh, when you want to change that, then down here in our media query, you see we have a max width of 768 pixels. So anything 768 pixels or less, what we're doing to our span is we're giving it a width of 100% and you can do clear both or you can do float none, okay? And there's a subtle difference between the two and I'll show you what that is uh, right now. So, okay, we're gonna put clear both on here because that's what we've talked about. So, uh, when we do that and we come back over to our page here, and let's just go ahead and refresh this, and we make it smaller, then you can see that we have that top to bottom orientation here. Now, um, you notice we have our red background and so on and so forth. So that's that's how we go from the side by side orientation to the top to bottom orientation. You use uh, a percentage width and you can use the clear. Um, you can also use float none like this. So what that essentially does is uh, where we have float left and float right, it's gonna change to float to none and it's gonna cause these elements to, to no longer float. Okay, you can see in this case, uh, both have uh, the same effect really. Um, the difference between float none and clear both is, uh, it does have an effect in, in certain situations. In this particular situation, it really doesn't seem to, but um, float none means that you are telling, um, you are telling that element whether it can allow other elements to flow alongside of it. Okay, so if you have a float left, that means you're gonna push the element that you've applied float left to the left and allow other elements to flow to the right uh, to the right of it. Okay, float right obviously allows them to flow to the left. When you switch that to none, you're saying that no element can float alongside of uh, this element. If we were to come here and we were to get rid of the width 100%, and refresh this, you'll notice that uh, here, if we go ahead and shrink this screen, that it doesn't let any of the elements, there's no floating happening, but the element is actually still 50% like this, okay? So, uh, again, the idea here is that the float none makes it so that these, uh, that these elements don't allow anything to float alongside of, of them. Um, or that they don't allow this element to float one way or the other. Clear both is a subtle difference in semantics in that uh, it doesn't allow uh, other elements to float alongside of it. So float uh, none means the element itself, you're telling that element not to float. Clear both is you're telling that, telling that element to not let other things float alongside it. Again, a really semantic difference uh, in, in a lot of cases it's going to be the same it's going to have the same effect but if you're seeing issues where you're saying you maybe you're using clear both and you're having some issues with things lining up correctly you might try switching to float none and see if that resolves your problem and vice versa okay so uh, again that's what we're doing um, when we are using float none and clear both so We'll go ahead and change this to clear both. And we'll come over here and take a look at our site again. We'll go ahead and refresh this. Um, and actually let's change the width to 100, or get rid of the width here. All right, so you can see that uh, how that is actually different when you use clear both, okay? With float none, it was centered with clear both now. Um, they're still you know, to the left and to the right, but they're not allowing any element to come alongside them. All right? So hopefully that makes sense in illustrating the difference between float none uh, and clear both. All right, so again, when you're creating uh, responsive designs, then you're going to um, you know, use those in order to switch from the side-by-side -side view to the top to bottom view. All right, and that gives us what we're looking for 
here with our div stretch 100% width and they're all top to bottom view. Okay, so that is working with floats. That's kind of one of the, again, main individual skills of creating a responsive design. That's probably more <laughs> than maybe you necessarily uh, would need in terms of what to do with floats, but I think it's important to understand how they all work so that when you get into the intri intricacies of your design, you can understand how to uh, change cert certain things to get uh, a, a certain effect that you're after. Hey guys, John here. So the biggest question I always get when I do these courses is where can I get access to the source code? So I obviously can't upload that here on YouTube. So I've made that available for you over on BitTorrent. And along with the source code, you'll also be able to actually download the videos uh, to your computer so you can have them forever. So if for some reason something crazy happened and I decided to delete them or YouTube kicked me off of their site or whatever, it wouldn't really matter for you because you would have all the source code, you'd have all the videos, all everything essentially that I've created for the course you would have on your own computer. So I've created a link in the description where you can find that stuff over on BitTorrent. Please consider going over there, supporting me that way. I'd appreciate that. Also, please consider uh, making a donation here on YouTube using the fan funding. This is how, or one of the ways that I'm able to keep all of the videos that I'm doing and releasing here on YouTube for free by those who are able to pitching in and allowing me to do that. So if, please consider that. And if you need access to any of the resources that I use through everything that I do online, coding, releasing videos, etc., you can head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources. And I have a whole slew of all sorts of different resources from hosting to different uh, tutorials and just everything over there that I use. So uh, again, johnmorrisonline.com slash resources.